As the situation in Egypt escalates every single day and as military vehicles patrol the streets in a vain attempt to keep order, it's become increasingly clear that this is a movement truly from the working class against the elite that run the establishment. The government has used every tool of oppression that it has in an attempt to control the people. He's had the military patrol the streets to no avail. He's enacted a curfew, which everyone has ignored. He's completely blanked out the internet so that even himself cannot have access to the World Wide Web. He's even had pro-Mubarak supporters in their infinitesimally small numbers throw Molotovs at pro-freedom demonstrators. All of it has failed miserably. Thus far, all of these repressive measures have failed because the people have had enough. They've had enough of being controlled. They've had enough of being repressed by this dictatorship. The people are mad as hell and they are not going to take it anymore. It is very clear to everyone in the world at this point that that U.S. puppet Mubarak cannot survive. His time is over. Everyone knows it. And most importantly, Mubarak knows it. In the midst of this revolution and all the other countries that this revolution is spreading to, we must always keep in mind that the forces of reaction are always present and are always looking away to usurp people's power toward their own interests. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama have already made such statements in support of the dictatorship of Mubarak by coming so close as to almost outright praising him. Their more subtle methods have been calling for peace and nonviolence. They've asked for the protesters to stop and to have Mubarak initiate reforms that the people want. This is all just a pathetic attempt to keep their puppet Mubarak in power, which we all know cannot happen. On the other side of the spectrum is Glenn Beck and the propaganda spewed by Fox News. Glenn Beck and people like him have attempted to portray this revolution as a, a surge of a radical Islam attempting to take over the country and thereby proxy the rest of the world with Sharia law. This is nothing short of a call for the U.S. Army to intervene in Egypt to keep radical Islam and therefore Al-Qaeda from taking over Egypt. Nothing could be further from the truth. This is the true expression of the people and the people's will. Religion has played absolutely no role in this event. What has played a role in this event is the attempt to use the racism and prejudice of the right wing to try to instigate the use of the U.S. Army to suppress a popular people's rebellion. All of this propaganda from the right and the phony left of the Democrats is all in line with the interests of the U.S. ruling elite. The idea that they're trying to perpetuate is along the, along the lines concerning the uh, Egyptian stocks that are suffering as a result of this revolution. They have tried to portray this as a moment where we have to step in or we should step in or else the government to preserve prices and to preserve stocks and oil trading and whatnot may step in and seize property in order to do so. They're raising a specter of socialism to try to frighten the people because they know there is a definite socialist characteristic to this revolution and they're trying to pull out the old skeleton out of the closet to scare people away from the true people's power. Such a thing will not work. They've also begun to use racism as a way of trying to portray the Egyptian revolution negatively. Recently, you've probably noticed that gas prices have increased in the world. While they have adamantly claimed that it is because of Egypt, the fact is, Egypt is not that large of a player in the oil game. It is commonly seen that uh, the whole Middle East is one giant oil field that's for the taking. Well, this is not the case. By perpetually blaming Egypt for the gas prices, they're instituting more hatred towards Egypt and the Egyptian people for this, this phony surge in gas prices and therefore stirring up nationalist sentiment and using racism against this popular revolt. Another major aspect of this situation is that the U.S. does not want to lose control over Egypt. Egypt is a major ally in the region for the U.S. and its interests, along with several other Western powers. It is also a very 
powerful tool against the Palestinian people. It's a, a blatant ally of the illegitimate state of Israel. And Israel, more than anyone else, is afraid of a true people's republic in the Middle East because they most certainly will not tolerate what is being done to the Palestinians. The greatness of this revolution in Egypt is that it has pure proletarian roots. No one is being held up as the model savior. This is a true revolution that is not being controlled by any monetary interest by the West, by the East, by anyone. This is a true attempt at a revolution not like the fraudulent green revolution that recently took place in Iran, which was backed by the U.S. administration and U.S. taxpayer dollars. No one is being held up as the model to, or the, the big one man that's supposed to save everybody, the one person that's supposed to be elected to end this all. No such thing has been forthcoming because this has been a true bottom-level revolution against those on top. This is not like the Green Revolution. This is not a paper tiger revolution. This is the real thing. I have absolute faith that this is a true revolution from the bottom, and it is purely of a class nature. Even the New York Times has been forced to acknowledge the genuine class nature of it. They have noted the widening uh, gap between the rich and the poor. They have also noticed the popular anger that has come from the state, privatizing essential services. These have raised the prices. These have made lives more difficult for the average Egyptian, contrary to market theory. The people do not want this. The people do not want privatization. They want protection from the market. It is important to note here that the situation is going to get worse before it gets better. Already, five people have been killed by the Egyptian army and others, as well as almost a thousand have been injured. As Mao so eloquently said, revolution is not a dinner party. One should be prepared for violence, for people to die. And we should be prepared for people to die because that is the nature of imperialism. That is the nature of capitalism. Violence is the only means by which they have to maintain their power over the people. If the weapon used against you is violence, then you are most certainly going to have to use violence back. Violence is a necessity because it is already a fact as a tool used by the, the oppressors. Freedom, like life, life itself, cannot be controlled. All we can do right now is to sit back and let events in Egypt unfold and always be sure to let the people in Egypt know they have our support. We need to let them know that we are with them in this time, that we stand in solidarity with all peoples oppressed in this world. The Egyptian revolution should serve as a beacon of hope for all oppressed peoples in this world. Revolution is not only possible but it is necessary now.